Hi there. One key part of maintaining financial stability in the banking system is to have a system of capital ratios. So let's just spend a few minutes looking at this particular specialist topic in financial economics. So we've seen in recent times that capital ratios have become more important as part of attempts to, to improve and then maintain financial market stability, particularly in the aftermath of the global financial crisis of 10 years ago. A commercial bank's capital ratio is a measure, and it measures the funds that the bank has almost as a buffer or as a reserve against the riskier assets it holds that could be at risk or could be vulnerable in the event of a crisis. So the European Union now, as part of the European Union financial system, runs regular stress tests to check whether commercial banks have enough of a capital buffer to, to be able to cope with particularly severe, difficult economic or financial conditions. These actually are known as disaster scenarios. So a capital ratio is when a bank must maintain sufficient capital. Now, where does this capital come from? Well, it comes from raising money, from selling new shares to existing or new investors, or also perhaps holding back some retained profits. In other words, they don't distribute the profits to shareholders. They're kept back to act as a capital reserve. Since the end of 2013, Europe's banks across the piece have raised over 180 billion in extra capital. But on the flip side, the size of non-performing loans, in other words, loans that could in theory go bad, has also risen, particularly in countries like Italy and Greece. So a capital reserve is quite important, or a capital ratio is quite important for banks. For example, a highly capitalised bank would have a high capital ratio. And basically, that would be able, mean it would be able to meet a, a, a large liquidity demand from its creditors in, in a kind of in a perfect storm, a, a disaster scenario. Because what the bank could do is it could sell its illiquid assets at a heavily discount price and absorb the losses, maybe, uh, from bad debts because it's got a big capital buffer. So basically, this would allow a bank to to keep going through a crisis. So commercial banks now have to show they have sufficient resources in place to cope with any major shocks. They could be domestic shocks, for example, a housing market collapse in the UK, or a severe external shock, a banking crisis, or a big recession in the European Union, for example, or perhaps in China. So the European Union now run these stress tests, and the seven major lenders in the UK that take part are the big commercial lenders, Barclays, HSBC, uh, Lloyds, RBS, Santander UK, Standard Chartered, and of course Nationwide, the biggest building society. The evidence seems to be that the British banks are actually quite well capitalised and that in most cases they meet the current stress test. They will be able to survive a, a, a once-in-a-generation financial crisis. And one of the reasons why that's happened is because many UK banks have increased their capital ratio. Here's an example to finish with. This is for Lloyd's Banking Group, and this is their Tier 1 common capital ratio. In other words, the amount of equity capital the bank has, share capital effectively, compared to its other assets. And of course, those assets include some of the loans they've um, they've issued. And you can see that over the last five or six years, Lloyd's has increased its Tier 1 capital ratio. Uh, UK banks, by the way, are required to hold a minimum 7% tier one capital ratio so Lloyd's is well ahead of that if we go back a few years the UK government pumped over 20 billion pounds into Lloyd's CSB uh, took a 43 percent stake in the business in during the, the worst of the financial crisis uh, Lloyd's CSB itself had launched a rescue bid for Halifax Bank of Scotland over the years the government has reduced its shareholding in Lloyd's in fact in May 2017 it Lloyd's group Lloyd's banking group having sold off TSB, uh, returned fully to the private sector. But Lloyd's is a good example of a bank which has now a significant capital buffer, a high capital ratio, which in theory makes it better able to cope with big shocks in the financial system. So that's a quick primer on capital ratios.